Hello and welcome. My name is Brother James, and we're here in the chapel of the Monastery of the Society of St. John the Evangelist in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The Society of St. John the Evangelist is the oldest monastic community for men in the Anglican Communion. We were founded in 1866, just outside Oxford in England, and we came to this country, to the Boston area, in 1870. Our ministry is one of teaching, preaching, spiritual direction, worship, and leading retreats and quiet days like this retreat today. I'm calling our time together, Today Christ is Born, Praying with the Icon of the Holy Nativity. I get this title from an antiphon we sing at Evensong, before and after the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. Today the Christ is born. Today has a Savior appeared. Today on earth angels are singing, archangels rejoicing. Today the righteous exalt and say, glory to God in the highest. Alleluia. Today, the Christ is born. This series of videos is going to be made up of this introduction, introductory video, which will be a few minutes long. The next video will be one about how to pray with an icon, followed by another video about particular prayer practices you may want to use while you're following these meditations. And then the remaining videos will be uh, brief teachings about specific areas of this icon of the Holy Nativity here. Each of those videos, each of those reflections will be about 10 or 15 minutes long, followed by 20 minutes of gazing, and then we'll end with praying the Lord's Prayer. Once these introductory videos have, once you've watched these introductory videos, you're welcome to see the rest of the videos in any order that you wish. I would encourage you to take your time. If you want to repeat a particular video, you are more than welcome to do that. And this can be done in the course of a day. You can, you can spend a day um, participating in these various videos. Or you can do it over the course of several days. It can be a quiet day, or it can be a week-long retreat over the Christmas period. I'd invite you to, to listen to the teachings and then spend the 20 minutes in gazing at the icon. Once you've done that, I would suggest that you spend a few minutes expressing your thanks to God for the graces, the insights, the experiences you've been given. One of my favorite lines in scripture comes from the end of the feeding of the multitudes when Jesus says to the disciples, gather up the crumbs that nothing may be lost. And so I would suggest at the end of your prayer time, you, you gather up the crumbs, the crumbs of your experience, the crumbs of your insights, the crumbs of your graces, so that nothing may be lost. And then, as I said, we will join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Once you've done that, you may want to spend a few minutes journaling, if that's something you do. Just spend a few minutes writing down, listening, um, reflecting on uh, the graces you've received as a way to, uh, as a way to make them real, as a, as a way to make them concrete. So that's how our time together over these next several videos is going to unfold. But before I end today, I want to read a poem to you. This is one of my favorite poems. It comes from Scott Cairns, a book of poetry called Compass of Affection. And the poem's called Ruminant. So that's why the monk's thin lips trembled as he took the holy fruit. How every word becomes a subtle flesh 
whose savor one infers piecemeal as he ruminates. Near enough. Swallowing whole is fine for dogs, but even cattle mark the latent good of mulling matter over and again, if never quite again, given that the apparent local matter of a word will always promise in its telling textures to be more the sort of gum whose sugars will not quit, nor ever quite hold still. Swallowing whole is fine for dogs, but even cattle mark the latent good of mulling matter over and again. And that's what I'm going to invite you to do over these next several videos, is to mull matter over and again as we gaze at this icon of the Holy Nativity and ponder the mystery of the Nativity and the Incarnation of Jesus.